Hello, and we are back with a new video. So this is a color pattern that I came up with about a week ago or so. I'm going to call it a rustic gill pattern. And it looks something like that. And <clears throat> as I was painting it, when I was almost done, I realized, you know, that almost looks like a walleye. So I finished the gill pattern, but I have these really nice lure planks I got from Sugar Tits Custom Lures. It's like a walleye body. And I use the same color pattern to do a walleye. So basically, I killed two birds with one stone. And I'm going to show you how we do both of these. Because the process is the same until close to the end. And I'll show you how we finish these up. But these are great great lure bodies. I think they look fantastic. I even did a, did a perch pattern with this. They're fantastic. <clears throat> so starting with um, this blank here, this was a blitz from Dinger Bates and he is closing shop because he is pursuing his own business and uh, wish him all the luck. And uh, I think these lure blanks are, are offered uh, elsewhere as, as well, but this is a, a blank that um, Brian from Dinger and myself designed about seven years ago. It's now had been copied many times. All right, so so I don't have to bother you with the uh, the basics. Again, we start with a, a white base coat, and I like to use a golden brand titanium white. And that's what that's going to look like. And then I took some wicked silver, a pearl silver, and I spray that over the entire bait, but leave the belly uh, white. So I figured, why, why have you watched me paint that? That's pretty basic, and I want to concentrate more on the, uh, on the more detail process. So off we go. So we have the pearl silver. I'm going to go on to... A gray, a Comart gray. I like Comart paints because they are pretty much airbrush ready to paint. And I know when you look at this bait, you go, "Where is the gray?" Well, your bait is only as good as the previous layer. You're going to build layers. It's very hard to get the layer, the color you want, just with spraying one or two colors. So you have to layer those colors on top of each other, and your base coats. Uh, will influence the coats that go on top of that and I will show you. So we're going to lightly spray some gray but we're going to do uneven intensities, some greater intensities than others, other areas, some darker, just lightly, just kind of go squiggly but maybe get some dark areas there. Kind of see that? It looks kind of goofy but uh, take my word for it and I'll explain here in a minute just some light and dark areas of of gray okay <clears throat> the reason being is paints are influenced like I said before by your base color so if you do a white base coat and you put a, a layer of yellow on top of that you're probably gonna get a good yellow but try spraying that same yellow over, say, a black base coat or gold or a silver, and you're going to get different results. So when I spray our next color, that next color will look slightly different when sprayed over these darker areas of gray and the light areas here that we did spray where you see the silver. And that's kind of where you're going to get that more natural looking pattern. A lot of my baits do look natural looking and some people think it's a very complicated process to get that. It is not. Somebody actually looked at this and go, oh, he used gold paint. I used no gold. So I'm going to clean up the airbrush and we'll go on to the next step. All right. <clears throat> next, I like to use these inks from Dollar Rowney and they're FW inks. This one's uh, Ross Sienna. And this is one of my favorites too, is antelope brown. It's almost like a poor man's sepia, but uh, it's more opaque than sepia. 
So what I did is I took mostly that raw sienna and mixed a few drops of the antelope brown and I got kind of a dirty mustard color. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can see it, it's going to be kind of like that color right there. We'll see when we spray it on the bait. But what we're going to do is on a cross stitch hoop I have some of this glitter ribbon. Pretty popular, pretty common. I attach it to the hoop so it's easier to hold on to. And you can get these at Michael's or wherever they do sewing and things like that. So <clears throat> I'm going to lay this on the bait and I'm going to spray again a random pattern, maybe some darker areas, some lighter, kind of like what I did with the gray. And then you'll see how the gray influenced this new color. <clears throat> I hope I can get this in the shot. Normally I hold this in my hand, the bait and everything, but I want to make sure you get a good view. So just lightly, random areas, pop, pop. So when I spray the yellow, or this yellow that I mixed, and I spray it over the gray, you're going to see how it darkens up here, and it's a little lighter over there. So it doesn't look like a lot now, but again, we're building our foundation for the other colors. Okay, let's do the other side. Again, we'll do the same thing. Random, spray, spray, pop, pop. So on the areas where this yellow hit the silver, it's a little lighter, and where it hits the gray, it's gonna be a little darker. And that is how you get the natural look. See, it's lighter here, but it's a little darker there where the where it landed on the gray. All right, and I'll do a little on the back. So <clears throat> you're probably wondering, well, how am I going to do the other color now with the ribbon if I move the ribbon? Again, we're looking for a more natural look. I'm going to reposition the ribbon in a different direction, right? Because nothing is perfect in nature. Let's make it look natural. Okay, now we're going to take that antelope brown and we're going to spray just antelope brown. <clears throat> Again, that antelope brown now will be influenced by our previous colors that we sprayed. A little bit of that gray and that mixture of the raw sienna and antelope brown. But we're going to fill in some of these light area voids. Again, Here's your ribbon. Pop it over the bait. Very lightly, just kind of a little bit. So antelope brown's a little darker. So a little bit here and there, fill in those voids. Now you're kind of starting to see the natural pattern. It's to look very natural looking. Right there. Some areas are darker, some are lighter. All right. Let's do the other side. You don't have to go too heavy. I may have gone a little heavy on the other side, but again, this is just a demonstration bait. All right, so the other side's kind of dark, but here, this one turned out pretty good. See just a hint of that gray in there? And when the antelope brown cover a little bit of that yellow from earlier, it gets a little darker. So the different shades, again, really brings out some natural tones to the bait. Now I got a little on the belly. Don't worry about that. We're going to paint that a different color as well. Um, I'm going to get the, the back a little bit. This is easier than you think. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I have this little crappie looking stencil from Anarchy Models. This is the HS45 and I'm going to make just some 
random spots. We're not going to cover the, the bait completely with this. Again, with the antelope round, just a few shots. Boop. If you don't have antelope round, like I said, uh, well, sepia is pretty close, but I like the antelope round. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. And just a few random spots. Maybe this will show a little texture in the color pattern. So I think this side of the bed actually is turning out better than the other. But that's okay. So we've got a few of the spots there. Not a lot. You don't need a lot, right? A little goes a long way. Don't overdo it. Spray a little bit of paint because you always can put more on, you can't take some off if you go too too much. Alright, so <clears throat> where we're at now is where I am, and I left off with this walleye I was talking about, or it could be a sauger. Saugers are like walleyes, very similar. So I did the exact same process here on both sides, and when I was first coming up with this, a friend of mine said, you know, that make a good walleye pattern. Like, oh man, who would have thought? So I did it on this lure body, and it's awesome. So we will continue both of these, and uh, again, we'll make this into a walleye or a sauger, and this will finish up in a gill pattern for you. All right. Next color is one that I have been bitch slapped about on my videos for pronouncing it wrong. I used to like to say sepia, but it is not. So I have been corrected, and it's called sepia, but that's still a challenge for me to say. So we're going to take just a little bit of sepia and load it into the brush, and we're just going to spray over the back. Again, sepia is more of a color enhancer, so spray a little bit on the back. start getting a really nice rustic color. See the different tones? A little bit of lighter. You can see a little gray right there. There we go. So, let me wait for the compressor to stop. So I sprayed a little bit of that sepia on the back. Now, when it comes to the walleye, use that sepia and spray your stripes. You can use a comb. I know some people use a comb like this if you're not comfortable freehanding. But I use the sepia now. I'm going to do three stripes. Broad stripes here, here, and here. And I will spray them by hand. It's like a V shape and then fill in that V. Very light. Don't go heavy. Another one in the mid body and a little bit in the back. Boom, boom. Boom, three of them. Do the other side. One, two, three. There we go. Not too heavy. And let's get the back. Love this lure body again. Sugar tits, custom lures. Uh, this dives to about eight to twelve feet, and it's not terribly expensive. I think it's under two bucks. So I love these. Okay, now we'll move right along. All right, now we're going to continue on with a golden yellow oxide. This is a good color to have. It's uh, not a bright yellow. It's more like a mustard yellow. Uh, in fact, I bet that if you don't have those two inks that I showed earlier, the raw sienna and the uh, antelope brown, you could probably use some of this yellow oxide and just darken it up just a tad. And you'd be right there. Or you can just try this on its own. Um, again, these steps are to just give you an idea of the process and you can come up with your own 
uh, signature colors and ideas. So, so you don't have to make an exact copy, but you know, if you get close and you're happy with it, hey, that can be your your own original pattern. So we got some uh, golden, again, it's high flow. The high flow means it's meant for an airbrush. All right, so what we're gonna do with this, we're just gonna spray the belly. And this is really what ties it all together. I know like walleyes have white bellies, but um, when I made this, I had the this yellow oxide belly on it already. When my buddy said, hey, that looks like a walleye. So, there is the yellow oxide. Again, it really kind of ties it together. And we're gonna come in with some white accents and I'll tell you in a little bit why I like using white accents on darker baits like this. Again, we'll do the same thing on the Blitz. Heat set that with a hair dryer, and we're getting close to finishing. Only a couple of colors left. Again, not a lot of colors and a very natural looking bait. <clears throat> okay, I have now loaded up the airbrush um, with some white, and we're going to start adding some of our accents. This is a, again a stencil from Anarchy Models. Some, just some spots that are a little bigger than, they have a smaller version, I like the bigger version. And we're going to spray some of the white here on the gill. And then I'll explain why I really like using the white. Oh, let me turn my pressure down. I get asked a lot, what air pressure are you using for this or that? You know, I think if you start using hard and fast numbers, uh, what works for me not, may not work for you. So what I recommend is before you spray anything on your bait, do a test spray on a piece of paper and see if the pressure is where you like it. The thinner the paint, the less pressure you need, and actually you're going to have more control of your painting if you, lose, if you use uh, less pressure and thinner paint. So let's hit the gill here with some spots. Right there. And let's do the other side. There's some spots. Now the reason I like doing this, especially on the walleye color, when you have a dark bait like this, the white can add some contrast and break up some of those dark colors. So now what we're going to do different on the walleye is we're going to do white accents over by the gill and on the tail. I did see a reference photo where they do have some white on the tail. And I'm going to do a little bit on the throat here just to kind of break up that yellow. But uh, again, the white kind of adds a little bit of contrast. And I made my own stencil. I took some plastic stencil sheets. I just cut some waves and stuff on it. And with this bait, I can follow the gill line here. and spray lightly, cover the gill, and spray just on the outside of that gill. Boom. You see that? White. Let's hit the tail. So it was a really dark bait, and then, um, and then the white kind of lightens it up. Um, we'll do the other side. Also like to do with these walleyes is walleyes have kind of a iridescent kind of looking eye so here's the eye I have some iridescent eyes and I lightly spray them white and I can grab them really quick here's some tiny ones so here's these little tiny eyes I'm gonna take two of them and I'm going to spray lightly 
very light. You don't want to cover them completely with white or else you're not going to get that iridescent effect. So just go very, very light. And then we're going to put those right there. We're going to glue them in. The walleye is pretty much done. Let's just hit the throat here a little bit. So there's the walleye. Okay, I'll, I'll put the eyes in here in a little bit. Actually, I'll, I'll put them in now and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I got the eyes in and there they go. The walleye is done and I'm gonna clear coat with Alumalite UV. I'm not gonna show it in this video. I have showed it in the previous video. I'm sure if you look under the one that's the nebula color, I show you how I dip and clear coat with Alumalite UV. But we didn't use many colors and look at how realistic that is, especially on this lure body. And I'll have links to sugar tits and everything else that's pertinent to the, this lesson. All right, we're gonna move on to um, I think one last color. I think we're gonna just do a little bit of black on the and make the gill mark and we could uh, call it a day. All right, let's put the finishing touches on this bait and what we're gonna do is a gill mark. And what I use is from Insane Custom Stencils. It's these gill and fin wheels. Here are the fins on the outside. Look at all the variations of fins. And he even has a real big one too if you're doing larger baits. Look at this, huge, it's huge. So check him out, insanecustomstencils.com. And he's also on Facebook, just do a search um, Russ is pretty awesome. Uh, good guy to work with. <clears throat> and if there's any stencils that uh, you don't see on his website, hit him up. Maybe he can custom make something for you, but you'd have to ask. And uh, his prices are very reasonable, especially what it takes to make one of these things. All right, so here's the gill mark. And besides just doing the gill mark, I also like a little bit of the overspray to hit underneath here a little bit to give kind of like a shadow effect. Let's see if I can just show you here on this one here. Just like that. And just a little bit of, a little more realism. All right, so let's see if I can get you, here we go. Line it up. Lightly. And I didn't get that gill plate area. Compressor and stuff. Do the other side. And let's just darken the back a little bit. The reason I like to do my backs darker colors kind of ties everything in. Okay, now, if you want even more contrast, right, with the white, what you, what you could do is do a white gill mark, like I, you've seen on some of my other videos, and then come back with the black, but offset this just a little bit so you can still see a little bit of the white. So two gill marks, right? A white, and then the black is offset a little bit. Uh, that wouldn't be bad for this bait either. I may try it on a, on a future bait. Now someone's going to say, hey, wait a second, he already has the eyes on. Why? Usually that's the very last thing you do. <clears throat> um, the eyes here, and again, it's just personal preference, look very prominent. But if you look at some fish, they're not that bright. So I come in with my black and it's thinned out, right, or reduced. So it's more transparent. And let's just spray a little haze of black over the eyes. Get some. All right. Just to tone it down a little. You see that? I may have to do this a little bit more. There we go. 
tone it down again. It's all about a little realism, and it doesn't have to be complicated. Remember that. I have people look at my base and go, oh, I can never do that. Sure you can. I'm showing you right here. We used a handful of colors, and they're common colors that you probably have already. Okay, tone down the eye. And sometimes I'll come in and kind of hit the snout here a little bit. And there we go. We are done. So it looks very rustic. I kind of like that. But I think I'm going to do the double gill mark next time. A little bit of the white. And then do the black on top of that with showing a little bit of the white. For con again, for contrast. Because if you look, the black gill mark kind of gets lost. So we will remember that and we'll make the fix next time. All right, that's all I have. Um, I'm glad I'm able to show you this. I'm really excited about this color pattern, especially when I knocked out two baits in one. That never happens. I can't say never anymore because it happened. All right, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, please subscribe. Um, I have some time in my hands, so I'm going to try to try to produce more videos for you. I've come up with a already a few new color patterns here. So um, again, thank you. And uh, also, one last thing is um, all my color patterns, or most of my color patterns, not all of them, but most of my color patterns are in a tackle shop in um, uh, Illinois. I had it written down. There we go. Um, it's the Fishing Connection Tackle Shop in Tinley Park, Illinois. And uh, they have my baits, uh, a select few, um, in their shop. And also you can go to the BoatNTackle.com website. It's Boat, and the letter N, Tackle.com. Um, the Fishing Connection is the Fishing Connection uh, dot biz. So check those guys out. They carry my stuff. Uh, I don't have my baits really hardly in the other tackle shops. So again, thanks for watching.